before it occurred and did not use its security forces to try to stop it. Chris? Jennifer, thank you. For more, we're joined by the CEO and co-founder of the Malala Fund, Shiza Shahid, who's in New York. And here in studio, former U.S. Ambassador to Nigeria, John Campbell. President Obama talked this week about the limits of what he can do to try to rescue these school, girl, school girls. Let's watch. I have this remarkable title right now, President of the United States. And yet, there are times in which I want to reach out and, and save those kids and am having to think through what levers, what power do we have at any given moment. Ambassador Campbell, realistically, what can the U.S. and also what can the government of Nigeria do to try to save those hundreds of schoolgirls? The U.S. can provide technical assistance, particularly intelligence, intelligence sharing. It can also provide expertise in things like negotiation strategies, if and when uh, that becomes something which is, which is feasible. However, for the U.S. to do anything requires the request uh, and acquiescence of the Nigerian government. Nigeria is a sovereign country. And we can uh, operate in Nigeria only at the behest and, and why, of the government. Because this came up in Jennifer's report. Why has Nigeria been so reluctant to take action itself and to ask for international help? Nigeria traditionally views itself as the giant of Africa, as indeed it is in terms of population. It is a proud country that, for a long time, has played an extraordinarily positive role in conflict resolution in West Africa. In other words, the Nigerian, uh, the Nigerians look to help, not be helped. So this is a different set of circumstances for a Nigerian right. government. Let me bring up one more question before I bring in Ms. Shahid. What does this terrorist group, Boko Haram, want, to the best of your knowledge? Is this all about a prisoner swap for some of their members who are in Nigerian jails, or is this just simply about terrorizing the Nigerian people and undercutting the central government. What Boko Haram's rhetoric says is that it wants to destroy the Nigerian state. It wants to destroy the Nigerian state because the state is secular. It wants to destroy Western education because it sees Western education as promoting secularism and shaping the Nigerian state. Ms. Shahid, you run the Malala Fund, named after your good friend Malala Yousafzai, who was subject to a terrible attack uh, in Pakistan as a schoolgirl who was speaking for girls' rights. Uh, why are these terrorist or this is, these Islamist groups so frustrated, uh, so threatened by the power of women? Chris, it's unfortunately a tactic that we've seen deployed by extreme groups again and again as a means of intimidation of control of terrorizing families of terrorizing entire populations and it really stems from the wider ideology of groups like Boko Haram and the Taliban which attacked Malala of course that is fear of progress fear of liberal and progressive thinking and fear of women in particular being empowered. In the Swap Valley we saw this as a gradual progression where first children were asked to be segregated, then they demanded some changes in the curriculum and then moved towards actual destruction of schools. And in Nigeria it's been an even swifter and more horrifying attack with the kidnapping of almost 300 schoolgirls. Let, let me uh, ask you about the actions of the Malala Fund, because you're now donating all the money you get to Nigerian women's groups, and you are calling for urgent action to try to save these girls. Would you like to see President Obama and the U.S. use all military assets to launch a rescue mission? Well, I think it's promising that the Nigerian president has accepted the offers of support from the U.S. and from the United Kingdom and that these teams are now on the ground 
it's unfortunate that it took three weeks for this cooperation to come about and given that it is Mother's Day we are hopeful that things will move quickly from here on. It's also been incredibly promising to see the power of social media in this case almost 900,000 signatures on the petition um, change.org calling for the release of these girls and two million impressions on Twitter with the hashtag bring back our girls that really compelled both the Nigerian government and the international community to move on this issue we have to stay hopeful and and you know the Malala fund is pushing and a variety of groups are pushing uh, to see these girls return safely and to see longer term investments in the security and education of Nigeria. Former Secretary of State Clinton spoke out this week uh, about the kidnappings. Here she is. The government of Nigeria needs to get serious about protecting all of its citizens, girls and women, as well as boys and men, and ensuring that every child has the right and opportunity to go to school in security and safety. But Ambassador Campbell, uh, Secretary Clinton has come under fire this week because of the fact that back in 2011 she rejected calls by the FBI and the intelligence community to designate Boko Haram as a foreign terrorist organization. As a Bush appointee to be ambassador, do you think that's fair, the criticism of Secretary Clinton? No, I don't think it's fair. And uh, along with a good many other Nigerian experts at the time, we all opposed designation. We oppose designation because we don't think that the legislation actually fits the situation in Nigeria. Uh, the Boko Haram movement is highly diffuse. It's not a centralized organization. It has important grassroots elements to it. The legislation has to do essentially with issues like getting visas to come to the U.S or uh, the movement of money from the U.S. to Nigeria, neither of which is relevant. What the legislation also does, however, is that it inhibits the possibility of future contact between either private citizens or public personalities with Boko Haram, and at some future point, that might reduce the options that we have in terms of negotiation. Ms. Shahid, you know, that's, of course, the problem here. Uh, this is obviously a horrific uh, event. Uh, how do you reconcile your call for justice and and fighting and dealing with groups like Boko Haram or the Taliban in Pakistan with all of these complications and diplomatic considerations? Well, I think there's things that we know have to be done. Um, in particular, bolstering local organizations and civil society inside Nigeria. We've known for a long time that Nigeria's local education situation is appalling. One out of every six children who are out of school are inside Nigeria, uh, and the, the state of protection for girls and women remains incredibly shocking. Um, so whether we move um, on certain diplomatic fronts um, is important, but in addition, what is important that is that all ordinary people, all aid institutions, um, invest in building Nigeria as a country, as an economy, and in its next generation through schools and through education. Ambassador Campbell, we've got about a minute left. First of all, do you think that these 200, 250 girls are all in one group? Do you think they've been split up? And what are the realistic chances that we'll ever be able to save them? We, of course, have no hard information on that. But I think it's highly, it's highly likely that they have been split up. And given the fact that national borders in that part of Africa are essentially lines on a piece of paper drawn by the uh, British and the French, I think we have to anticipate that some are in Cameroon, some are probably in Niger, perhaps some as far as Chad, as well as some in, Niger so in Nigeria. So do we ever get them back? I think the question is, how many do we get back? We're talking about a very large number of people. The Nigerian media reports that two of the girls already have been killed by snakebite. So it's a bleak situation. It's a bleak situation. Ms. Shahid, Ambassador Campbell, we want to thank you both so much for coming in today. We will stay on top of the story. Thank you. Thank you.
Do you think the U.S. should do more to try to rescue the Nigerian schoolgirls? Join the conversation.